What's up everybody, Thralls Mono here once again. I'm Necrocknick, and I have an album review for you. Still battling this stupid fucking cold that I got. I have fucking unleashed so much snot into so many tissues here lately. I swear there's probably enough of it to build another snot me, which sounds like a horrible thing to unleash on humanity. So I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna continue to review albums on my own just because I don't wanna get the other guys sick. But there was definitely more I wanted to go over, namely this one right here, because I saw that Metal Meltdown reviewed it and I was like, fuck, I totally forgot that was coming out and I'm a huge fan of this band. So today, we're gonna go over the latest offering from Elder, Innate Passage. This comes out again on the 25th of November on Stickman Records. This band formed in 2006 in Massachusetts and then I believe they moved to Rhode Island and at least as far as um, the archives are concerned, they live in Berlin now, so I don't know, I, I guess you go where the music takes you. This is their sixth album overall. I've been a big fan of this band since I picked up their album Lore, and I actually went back and jammed their earlier stuff, the self-titled and Dead Root Stirring. They started off as more of a flat-out stoner doom metal band. Very heavy, but very atmospheric. Lots of just thick, just fuzzy guitars. It was fucking awesome. Then I got into their later stuff, namely Reflections from a Floating World, and I was really kind of blown away by that one because that one kind of trimmed back the guitars a little bit and sort of add a bit of like proggy flavor to it. And then the next album, Omens, really took a hard shift towards atmospheric music in general and started including way more synths. So this band's evolution has been really interesting. And as much as I like the earlier stuff, because that's where I got into them at, I really like what they do now. So needless to say, they have continued to embrace this more proggy atmospheric sound, and I think they're doing it better here. This is decidedly more up-tempo than I was expecting. In fact, the first two tracks Catastasis and Endless Return both are kind of driven by like faster grooves. And that's kind of interesting because you think stoner metal, stoner doom, you think more slow plotting songs that are kind of driven by droning riffs. And there are some droning riffs on here, but a lot of this is very clean played guitars, lots of atmospheric tremolos and, you know, interesting guitar harmonies coupled with lots and lots of synths. In fact, these synths sound a lot like Tangerine Dream. And after going through a whole bunch of their albums, yeah, dude, I can definitely detect that sound there. The synths definitely contribute heavily to the atmosphere. Everything is very layered, and the production here is really good. Like, it's very organic. It sounds very warm. It sounds very inviting. Like, this whole album is like getting lost in the cosmos and sort of just drifting in the ether or, or something to that effect. I don't know, it's a very interesting cosmic journey of an album. Now, as with any Elder release, these songs are very long. This is five tracks in just under 54 minutes so there is a lot of music and these songs do a good job of just exploring sound and soundscapes and melody this is a very melodic offering in fact a lot of their heavier stuff is sort of kind of been pushed way in the back like occasionally you get some moments that are a little bit heavier but a lot of this is more about the spacey atmosphere and just really cool flow of the songs. Catastasis opens up with a nice little build up with the synths in the background and you hear this fluttering clean guitar melody. It's very pretty, it's very inviting. And then you kind of get into this, you know, more droning riff that kind of comes up and you get this nice steady sort of rocking groove, which again, I was kind of surprised that this was a little bit more up tempo. And while it rocks out that stoner groove for a little bit, it kind of comes back to the clean melodies and includes it with it. And I really like that about this album. Like it's continuously building, like it builds in layers. There's lots of stuff that fades in and fades out and you can hear each layer come in. So that's also a testament to the production, but just in terms of the songwriting and how methodical it is. Honestly, the entire time I was listening to this, I was kind of wondering is post stoner rock or stoner metal a thing? Because this kind of feels like what that would be if it is a thing. I don't know if it is, but, I mean, there's always room for another fucking subgenre in this fucking thing we call metal. But seriously, there's a lot of post-metal dynamics in here in terms of song construction, like, you know, deconstructing a song, building it back up. You know, the peaks and valleys are very tremendous. This is very comparable to, like, a blend of a lot of bands. Like, of course, you have stuff that is more, like, stoner metal-centric, like The Sword. But you also have stuff that sounds like Russian Circles and even Porcupine Tree to some degree, mixed with like, you know, some classic yes, and even like the more atmospheric offerings from cave -in. It's like they found the intersecting lines of all those bands and blended them at those points and just kind of came up with this really cool sound that, again, you're sort of just, 
you know, hypnotized by it. Like it has like a trance-like effect, even though it's very up-tempo and there's a lot of cool like songwriting dynamics all over here. The big standout for me on here was the song Merged in Dreams, Nay Plus Ultra. It is the longest song on here. And honestly, this is where a lot of the older sounds of Elder come out, at least somewhat. Like it is a little bit more guitar driven. There are some heavier sections. It's got like, you know, even some chuggy riffs on there. This sounds at least a little bit like what I got into with Lore and Reflections of a Floating World, but also kind of throws in some really cool guitar harmonies that kind of hark back to like Thin Lizzy. But the thing I like are the dynamics on this song really stand out. A lot of these songs just kind of have this cool steady flow to them. You kind of just follow them along. It's like on a river with occasional little bits of rapids, but most of the time it's, it's pretty fucking smooth. On this one, the river has some interesting turns, rapids, little drop-offs of calm areas where everything completely cuts out and builds right back up. The heavy sections are notably like a little bit more intense than they are in other songs, and they're contrasted by really cool softer moments. So like the dynamic flips on there really fucking stand out. This song in particular kind of reminded me a lot of Modern Mastodon, pretty much anything from Crack the Sky to Right Now. It kind of has that same sort of feel where they're going for more melody, atmosphere, but occasionally squeezing in some heavier parts because that's still part of their identity. And honestly, to a degree, I think this band kind of has a similar trajectory. They started off as one thing, a much heavier band, and now have moved on to much more you know, proggy atmospheric pastures. And honestly, for the most part, I really dig it. Now, I will be honest, I do miss some of the heaviness, mainly because it contrasted stuff really well. Before, you had these big, heavy sections that would contrast the softer, more subdued sections, so those build-ups actually got much bigger. Now, they're great crescendos on here, but they're different. It's, again, more of that sort of spacey progginess. The guitar tone on here, is more of a heavy rock tone, like it still sounds very dirty and it still has that, you know, sort of stoner fuzz to it, but for the most part, it's just, you know, like a good heavy rock tone. It doesn't really scream metal and, I mean, honestly, I don't know if this band actually screams metal anymore, but I don't think they really need to scream metal to be good. But even though I think these songs flow really well and I think they're really beautiful, and the album itself, front to back flows immensely well. Well, I mean, it would have flowed really well if I paid for Spotify, but I got squeezed in a fucking commercial about Christmas songs and fuck Christmas songs. It's bad enough I gotta walk in any fucking department store or fucking any store really and they're playing all that fucking phony holiday cheer bullshit and Mariah Carey, of course, because we can't go 15 minutes without hearing that repeated in a fucking store. But anyway, if that stupid commercial hadn't been there, this album flows beautifully front to back. Like, it is just a gorgeous piece of work that you can put on and just listen to in its entirety. And honestly, I think it's better that way. Like, I do like individual tracks in here, especially the last track, The Purpose. I think that actually has one of the more powerful choruses on it, which vocals on here are very minimal. Like, there's a lot of instrumental space kind of in between any vocal part. In fact, there are some songs in here that I thought were just going to be an instrumental. The song Coalescence, the vocals don't kick in until almost halfway through the song. And to a degree, I don't know if the vocals are entirely necessary. Like they do feel like that final layer that like, all right, well, we could add some vocals in certain spots to kind of match up with guitar harmonies and you know synth melodies and such, but they don't feel like absolutely vital to the music. And vocally, I like this band, but I don't think vocals are necessarily their strongest suit. But I think on here, they are improved and there's some really good vocal harmonies that really show off a little bit more range in terms of the band's vocals in the past. But as much as I like this, I do kind of miss the Doom, but Doom does not fit on here at all. This is not Doomy, this is more about cosmic exploration and maybe like prying open your third eye and smelling God or something like that. I don't know. It's definitely very trippy and psychedelic, but the doom aspect really doesn't fit anymore. So while I miss it, I don't think it is absolutely necessary at all for what they're doing right now, which I think is really fucking good. So overall, I'm going to go ahead and give this four stars. I think this is absolutely fucking amazing. It's a very cosmic, spacey, but very calming and just sort of like intense listen but like not like get your blood boiling intense but like you are intensely focused on it because there's just so much going on and most of it is just absolutely beautiful i love the songwriting on here i think it's really cool like just the almost post metal style of writing like continuously building building giant soundscapes but also throwing in really clever melodies i think the guitar work is quite exceptional here the moogs add 
so much to this in terms of the atmosphere and no one element on here really overtakes the other i think it's just a really balanced sound i love the rhythm section here i think you know the drum work is just solid and in the pocket the bass stands out really well and it's very heavy and thumping like I don't know, everything about this is just a solid listen throughout. While I do miss elements of their older sound, that is not where the band is at now, and I really like what they're doing, so I can't really complain that much. If you're a big fan of, again, like Russian Circles, uh, God, I would say Sleep, maybe even Call to Luna, albeit not as dark and depressing, or even if you're into stuff like Porcupine Tree or like Caven's like Jupiter era, like it kind of has that sort of vibe too, I strongly recommend checking this out. I would not say this is a metal release, but I would say this is a really good fucking release, so definitely check it out. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our store is there. If you'd like to get one of our shirts, we do need to restock on certain sizes, namely extra large. Also, for our Patreon subscribers, we are doing a poll to see what bands we're going to do next in terms of rankings after we're done with Crowbar. Miller's is still currently up. I'm going to keep it up there for a little bit longer, namely because we have a tie to break on there. So if you're one of our patrons, or would like to be one of our patrons, click the Thralls Metal link, click the Patreon link, and sign up, and please vote. And of course, Denver Death Fest stuff, we do have a pre-sale going on for 33% off of a three-day pass for it. It will be going on from April 20th to April 22nd in Denver, Colorado, because it's Denver Death Fest. And uh, we're looking forward to making announcements about that. That won't come until I believe near the new year where we'll unveil the entire lineup or at least the entire lineup we have so far. We still might be able to add bands. I don't know. I'm just essentially the guy that's running the day-to-day -day stuff. So all the Denver Death Fest questions should definitely be pointed in the direction of John or Miller. But it's happening and we're hoping to see a whole bunch of you there. It should be a damn good time. And of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that shit. It means the fucking world to us. I have talked to the point where my voice is starting to get really fucking hoarse. This fucking cold sucks, but I think I'm getting better. I'll eventually get better is what I mean. It's, it's fucking stupid, but I'm still going to keep doing this. I just need to get some cough drops, apparently. Or get a humidifier down here, but those things make noise and that'll ruin the fucking audio. I don't know. It's a whole fucking thing. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. It's just awesome doing this shit, and you guys make it awesome. So thank you once again, and we... We'll catch you later.